welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, all y'all. Thanks for tuning back in to uh, Logic's View. We have special guest Rashawn Jones joining us today, and we're going to be discussing a variety of topics. First question, um, this week we've been on the subject of what it means to be an unashamed child of God. Um, well, it's uh, definitely with everything that's going on that you see in the news and the, and the type of the type of uh, culture this country is trying to create with uh, all these anti-Christ type of uh, laws and, and the stuff they like to promote. And then also with their, <clears throat> with the cancel culture, it's more, it's more, it's getting tougher and tougher to truly be unashamed. But to me, being unashamed means that uh, regardless of what's going on around us, regardless of how unpopular our biblical beliefs may be, uh, we're not going to shy away from speaking the truth if we're not ashamed of this gospel, even if it means that you might get persecuted by the cancel culture or you might get, uh, you know what I'm saying, they might come at your neck about, <laughs> you might not be accepted in certain areas if you're an artist or if you have a business in which you sell clothing or any type of uh, product that is, the more people that you can reach, the better for you. Um, mm -hmm. If you're not, if you're, if you're willing to, compromise if you're willing to lose that for the sake of keeping it and speaking the truth that to me is when, when you're unashamed where i'm not about to hold back this gospel just because these people might not like it over here or on social media and may not get that many likes or people might look at me funny for standing on these beliefs they might call me a bigot or you know what i'm saying they might call me crazy and you know they doing they doing a lot when it comes to what how they how they are attacking Christian beliefs in our foundation. They calling us Man. haters and terrorists and all type of stuff. So yeah. in this day and age in America, we ain't never really faced no real persecution. So uh, right now it may be a little tougher than what it was to be unashamed, but imagine what they're doing overseas who, in China where it's illegal to have a Bible and in all these different countries and where they, they actually getting physically persecuted for their beliefs. That's really unashamed. But to me, uh, to be unashamed, like I said, is to I'm gonna stand on these beliefs, regardless of how it makes anybody feel, whether it be family members or your your friends that you had in the world, or or even your job. Like you're gonna stand yeah. on these beliefs because I'm not ashamed of the gospel. You know what I'm saying? Because hey, it's man. the power of God. It's, it's it's the gospel that changed me. And also, uh, the Bible does say that if I deny uh, the Lord in front of man, He gonna deny me in front of the our heavenly Father. And that's the part people don't get. Hey, While man. we are so concerned, <laughs> He's so concerned about whether or not uh, <laughs> this world or this culture is gonna like us. We forget that if Jesus don't like you, you're going to go to a place that is opposite of paradise which we all know mm. oh, might get canceled for saying this is hell. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's the, that's the bigger picture. And so we ought to, you know, we ought to be uh, kind of feel sorry for the people who are ashamed of Christ Jesus. Cause you're basically denying Christ in public. And he said, Man. it, going to deny you and before I heavenly father on judgment day. So. Mm -mm -mm. Great way, great uh, way to put it, man. And uh, lay it out there. And that's, that's beautiful. And it's, it's right on, spot on, man. One thing that's uh, constantly on my mind and, and probably yours too is how can we uh, more effectively encourage uh, all age groups to get back into prioritizing uh, worship and fellowship? A lot of people have been hurt by the foolishness in the church. And I think we need to hold people more accountable, even leaders who are just like reckless with the yeah. wall, reckless with their yeah. witness. And, and so a lot of people are starting to fall away because of the foolishness that's in the church. And because people are talented or they rich, or they may be, they look nice. We don't hold people accountable in this country mm -hmm. at all. When it comes to athletes, celebrities, and even ministers and celebrity pastors and preachers, like everybody, no, no, you know, we need to pray for him. And it's like, no, we need to rebuke him. And some people need to be rebuked. Mm -hmm. Some people, these people need to be held accountable, but we don't want, we, because of we're such uh, clout chasers and we don't, we care about pleasing man more than we care about pleasing God. We want to make, I want to be close to that person because they're known instead of like, nah, you want to stay away from that person because they're wicked. 
And so the Bible says we're known by their fruit. So it's like we're so scared because of this politically correct culture that nobody wants to hold nobody accountable. And then the final thing I could say is it's just the Bible. The Bible says uh, forsake not your assembling of yourselves together with one another. The Bible says that it pleases the Lord for uh, the the, uh, the saints to dwell together in unity. That's pleasing to God. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst, right? Mm -hmm. The Bible says one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000. So we're stronger when we're together. Amen. Like this is, this is the Bible. And, but you know, people don't want to believe the Bible. You got Christians who don't believe in the Bible. Like I, I know someone who literally goes to church every Sunday and every Wednesday. And this was last summer and told me, you know, it's kind of man, it's, you know, it's man's word, you know, he, it's mm -hmm. kind of a terrible, I don't know if I believe everything in the Bible, but you're sitting in a church every right. Sunday, every Wednesday, and you don't have the conviction that this is the word of God. Like, that's amazing to me, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, he's come a long way since then. Um, uh, but, but it's like the fact that people can be in a church and not believe the Bible in which the whole church foundation should be on. It just lets you know where we're at, man. It's more about the program. It's more about, um, you know what I'm saying? Just a, a, a ritual to go to church every Sunday. Right. It is about actually creating disciples and really learning about the creator and preparing us for an eternity. Like I do yeah. want to say this real quick. I know I, I don't want to come across insensitive, like, it's tough sometimes, man. Like I get it. Like there's oh, so yeah. many times, like there's so many times where I start, even with my music, I start a certain way in the Holy spirit, but like, Nope, going in this <laughs> direction. Like, and it's like, Lord, I, I sometimes I'm like, Lord, I just will like, I want to have some fun with this. And which of course I got music that's like that. But sometimes there's a, a season in which there's a certain word that God wants to speak to, to the church or to people in a season in which we have to be obedient to that man. And, Right now, it's like, it's just a lack of fear of the Lord, man. And so this truth got to be spoken, man. We've heard, it's been a whole bunch of God is love, and which is always going to be true, man. The Bible right. says that it's with loving kindness that he's right. drawn us. And that's what people got to understand. God is love. Like, he's not, like, sitting up there waiting for you to fail. He's actually giving you grace to be able, where you can fall sometimes. But the grace is supposed to be sufficient enough for you to come out. And, 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 and but I understand how it, it's hard to it's it's easy to fall into that trap of wanting to be liked by people. We're human. man. Yeah. So I yeah. have to battle with that, too. But, you know, right. you just got to trust God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're dealing with the uh, father of deception out here mm. who, who trying to deceive, divide, distract and destroy. And mm. uh, people got to be on guard. And be and stick to that word, man. He said, "Deceive, distract, divide, and destroy." I like that. That's man. a bro. That's crazy. He, that is what he's doing, ain't it? Yeah, man. Hey, man. So, uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, so I know you mentioned you got three daughters as well. Uh, just wondering, what are some of your practices for instilling? god's word in your children um they was younger children i know you mentioned that um yeah uh reading them the word of course um there's a lot of good biblical programming cartoons and stuff like that um but i think the main thing is living it like like when if a kid sees you living a certain way like they're gonna respect that way more than what oh, you yeah. say oh, yeah. <clears throat> so my wife and me we we live a biblical life they see my wife praying they see me praying they see us living out the word uh, of course we make mistakes of course we're human beings so we have our struggles and stuff like that but we talk to them i, I talk to my daughter my six-year-old like she knows about hell like you know what i'm saying she knows about heaven course i'm not just gonna lead with hell 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 i'm not no fire and brimstone dude i right. just speak the whole truth and uh she knows about god she prays she she knows about uh she has and because of that like of instilling that stuff and like i try to bring a biblical lesson in, into almost everything whenever i get a chance but i don't force it upon her at all though like you know what right. i'm saying like amen amen and yeah that's that's good and when they 
when they're younger like that, I mean, regardless of the age, your your our actions speak louder than words. Come on, so, man. so you you speak in volumes to them. And when they're younger, you know, they adapt and embrace anything good and positive. Training them up in the word yeah. definitely makes it easier getting them seeds planted. But it don't mean it's going to be, you know, I know people who's raised in the word. One of my homeboys used to go to church three, three days a week when he was a kid. <laughs> right. Now, <laughs> he ain't been in church for probably about 15 years. Don't want to go. Right. Don't want to hear about it. You know right. what I'm saying? Don't teach his kids about it. Right. Like, <laughs> it said raise them up in the word, not not in the church. The church hey. is nobody. It's the word of God. It's the gospel that get people saved. Man, and that's a great point right there. That's a great point right Moving there. right along. Moving right along. Um. What advice would you give to the uh, single children of God out out in the world? First and foremost, just again, it always go back to the word, man. You don't. First of all, there's an easy way. There's a lot of ways you can eliminate uh, potential candidates for a spouse. The Bible says that we don't want to be unequally yoked with non-believers. Boom, that eliminates anybody who's not a believer. That like you know what I'm saying now if you already if you get saved while you're married to a believer the scripture gives us instructions on how to handle that mm -hmm. but as far as if you are a believer and you're single you should not marry anyone that's not a believer that is the Bible you know what I'm saying so right it's, it's that and let but you could do what you want right <laughs> the decision you make but <laughs> I ain't gonna tell you you can't do nothing God give us free will but if you want a successful godly marriage I would suggest we pay attention to this thing right here that kind of gives us a kind of a blueprint on how to live it's amazing how how much information is in that and we we wonder why we keep failing but we're not obeying this but that's another topic man yeah, but um in yeah. the bible is clear in matthew 7 he said ask and you shall receive you know what i'm saying it it says it talks about how like if you give your children good things being evil how much more will your heavenly father give good things to mm. his children that you know what i'm saying Preach. And so like us so knowing that knowing the character of god because i read my word like my life depended on it i said okay god i want a wife and uh i know you know me you know what i need you know what i desire and you said if i delight myself in you you'll give me the desires of my heart so i wrote it down on a piece of paper i was like man lord i need a wife I needed a new job at the time because when I got saved, I left everything. I moved to a whole other city in Columbus, Ohio. Nice. And so um, I asked God, I laid it out. I need a job. I need a car, a new car. Uh, I need to get my car fixed or whatever. And I need a wife. And so I had got on a prayer line like the next day. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's safety in the multitude of counselors like you. I wanted to seek people of God and prophetic people of God at that. And All so right. I uh, asked a woman of God on this prayer line she's way down in florida but i used to my mom and me used to get on this prayer line um my mom had got saved probably like six months prior to me getting saved and Amen. so she was she was getting on this prayer line and so i asked her about like this woman like you think i should marry her and then she don't she never met her she never met me she was like this that girl got spirits god got something better for you and i said Amen. i prayed about it like, to always take a word and, and and seek the lord about it but i prayed about it and i felt like it was the case in my spirit stuff be tough but when god say something bro i'm doing it man like i ain't about to be playing around so the next day i called her and said we can't be together it sucked it was tough um it was hard man but i had to make that decision because i had to be obedient to the lord man like this is like marriage and stuff like that stuff is serious i think in this Definitely. culture we think this stuff is all a game we think it's all about gender reveals and Instagram proposals and stuff like that, but it's like, nah, this is marriage and like God right. don't want divorce. So it's very important for for you to pick the right for God to be the one choosing your spouse. Exactly. Um, I believe there's tons of options. We can choose our options, but just make sure your options are God's options. You know what I mean? And so I say that to say, uh, I broke up with her, bro, literally like two days later, one of the brothers that I met, I told him one day when I was headed to his crib, He's like, you sure? I said, yeah, I broke up with her, man. God said he got something else for me. 
are you sure? I said, yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah. He's like, all right, I got this woman of God, bro. Every time I see her, bro, I think of you. And every time I see her, I think of you. And I'm like, wow. the Holy Ghost feel man of God. That's why it's important to be connected with believers also. Mm, mm, because mm. you don't want to be getting, you don't want a worldly person introducing you to people when you a woman of man of God. Like the Bible tells us to be, uh, like it says, what fellowship does, does righteousness have with unrighteousness? Like, yeah. And like be not partakers of the evil works of darkness, but reprove them. We're supposed to be like we supposed to be come out from amongst them and being separate. So my friends changed. So now I'm hanging around men of God. And then yeah. when you hanging around the people of God, God uses people in our lives. And so when you're connected, that's how you end up getting blessed in other areas. But that's yeah. another story. Hey, Amen. So I'm like, all right. Like he's like, hey, she's gonna come over. He gave me her Facebook. <laughs> I hit her up on Facebook and I was like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Brother Martin told me about you, but she like, I don't talk to people on Facebook. I said, oh, <laughs> so that's a good sign. A lot of people take rejection as, oh, uh, no, nah, forget it. But no, nah, that's a good sign. Right. You want a woman like that. Uh, and so I went to, we did a studio session. He, she was on a song with him. I met her uh, that day. And then uh, she actually ended up taking me home because she lived closer to where I was. And my, my car was broke down at the time. And so we talked. And then we just talked on the phone, like about God, literally about God for weeks, like every mm. night for hours. And then um, she had a, she was telling me about dreams she had. She had a dream about going into some woman's house and knowing that the woman had no daughters. My mom has three boys. Um, she was talking about uh, how God showed her uh, the rapper, the truth, which is so crazy because that's the first Christian rapper that I like. And she said that God was showing her she was going to marry. Uh, somebody gave her a word that she was going to marry a Christian rapper, producer. Boom, that lined up. Uh, <laughs> something about curly hair. I got curly hair. like, and So that's how that happened. And, and I, now we're seven years, seven and a half years married. So I say that to say, wait on God. like, Amen. And I don't believe that you got to sit there and wait 300 years before your spouse. Like God knows, but you got to trust him. Get out the way. Stop trying to like I was trying to put two and two together and like, <laughs> like women was like from my past was inboxing me and stuff. I'm like, maybe it's her. And like, no, right, stop. right. God, and look how God set it up. Boom. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, great advice, bro. Very good. Very good. <clears throat> well, uh, it's been a great interview, man. I'm proud of you, bro. And this is an honor and a privilege to have you and the, um to have your contact information to be uh brothers in Christ. Absolutely, you know? bro. I definitely want to stay in touch and um, continue sure. to network, work together. And uh, we can, if you got any last thoughts or any shout outs, now's the time for them. And also uh, give the people uh, the um, directions on how they can follow and support you and whatnot. <laughs> so yeah, man. Um, so yeah, I, uh... I want to shout out Kalen Montgomery, man. Like, I don't know if you've heard of Kalen Montgomery. He's a he's a Christian rapper. He's out of Columbus as well. Man, that brother is just like, there's so much word in his music. He it, he's a humble dude. His lyrics are like, it's so edifying. It's got so much meat, so much of the word of God. So I just want to say shout out to Kalen Montgomery. Check out his music, man. Oh uh, yeah, super dope. He did one of my videos. He did um um the uh, I'm back music video which was from uh the song this uh the psalm six my project that i dropped back in august of 2020 uh so check him out man um and then uh yeah man uh my wife christina jones she has music out we did a song called agape that's on all streaming platforms we got more music coming from her as well um but yeah you could get my music on all of the streaming platforms uh if you check my my bio on my instagram which my instagram is uh, the St. Jones is T-H-E-S-A-I-N-T Jones. It's the same thing on, on Twitter. Uh, excuse me. And then on Facebook, my name is Sean Jones. If you want to uh, follow me on there or you can go to my, uh, you can search St. Jones and follow my uh, Facebook page, my artist page. And then, like I said, sign to uh, I'm going to put like, you're going to be able to buy my like hard copies for those who still like CDs. Uh, you're going to be able to buy the hard copies of the CDs from there. Also, uh, also, all the, the clothes, the merch, and all that stuff that you see, that you'll see in the music videos and stuff like that. We got t-shirts. It's like, t-shirts are like 15 bucks. Hoodies are like 30. And so, um, you can check that out. But um, other than that, man, I got it. Like I said, I got a new project coming out, man. I, I love this project. Like, 
the process of working on this has been incredible. Like it's called the Harkening. Um, it's coming out real soon. This is like my favorite project that I've nice. ever done by nice. far. And so that's coming out here soon. Um, yeah, man. Um, if you could support, the biggest support would be prayer, man, and, and sharing. Like, I think, I don't think people really realize how important sharing is. And on top of that, commenting on Facebook and then liking stuff because it, it helps to overcome the algorithms. It helps to put the, the message or whatever, the music at the top of the list so people can see it. And a lot of times people uh, like the, the, the internet, the Facebook and Instagram, like because of their algorithms, man, it, they limit the amount of your following who can see it. And so the more you like, the more you share, tag people in it, and the more you comment, the more people are going to hear the message. And uh, I like what you're doing, man. Uh, I saw your first interview, first show you did. I'm, I'm liking Logic View, man. Just keep doing it. You know what I mean? Just, hey, just be comfortable, man. Just keep going, bro. Like, this is this is pretty good. I like how you're presenting it. It's, it's, uh, I subscribe to your YouTube channel already, man, and I'll help share it. And uh, if you don't mind, I'll put this on my YouTube to kind of expose it to a little bit, a little bit of following that I do have. And man, just keep on going, bro. I appreciate you having me. God bless you, bro. Thank you again, man. And uh, keep doing what you're doing.